And so I want to urge everybody, starting with the Minister of Agriculture and everyone else, let us support this SRI method with our maximum capacity. And this SRI method is a proven example where the agriculture is sustained and as a correction to the Green Revolution discarding the use of chemical fertilizers that damage the environment in the long run. Once again, I repeat why we should fully support this SRI method. Because it increases production and yet does not damage the environment. And that's Our name the is Honorable Mr. President, farmer from Bali. In Bali, we managed 222 irrigation canals in the Tabanan Regency. On this wonderful occasion, please allow us to share our experience. Now in Bali, facilitated by DISIM, Nippon Koi, we were given field training in organic SRI. And then we understood the truth about organic SRI which is able to transform our nation's agriculture that in the end will enable us to reach and maintain national sufficiency in rice harvest. Thank you Mr. Ketut from Tabana. There is a saying that seeing is believing. And that's why training is important. Demonstration plots are also as we were harvesting a moment ago. Mr. Salim related to me that as this is introduced to the folks, husbands and wives can get rather agitated towards each other. What usually is a clump is now a single seedling. What if it doesn't grow? But after a while, as the days go by, there's conviction that this technology is not fuzzy, but rather brings much gain and increase. Once again, I repeat why we should fully support this SRI method. Because it increases production and yet does not damage the environment. That's the key. We should think about the future of our children, the lives of our next generation. Let's not squander our resources and leave them without theirs. What is SRI? Many think that SRI is a variety of rice plant or another different implementation may be. But SRI is actually a methodology that attempts to allow the genetic potential in the paddy that for a while now has been repressed by various agricultural techniques that have become familiar lately. This instructional video provides key principles as well as step-by-step -step guidance for farmers to learn and practice SRI methodology based on six-year experience of our DISM team of facilitators, which up to 2007 have been teaching more than 12,000 farmers over a total of more than 10,000 hectares plantation in eight provinces of Indonesia, and achieving an average of 78% increase compared to the conventional method. DISIMP or Decentralised Irrigation System Improvement Project in Eastern Region of Indonesia is part of the Ministry of Public Works. 
under the Directorate General of Water Resources of Indonesia. Six principles of SRI. Number one, seedlings are transplanted very young, usually just eight to 12 days old with just two small leaves. Two, seedlings are planted singly, only one per hill instead of three to four together to avoid root competition. 30 by 30 centimetres or 40 by 40 centimetres they are widely spaced to encourage greater root and canopy growth in a square grid pattern. 3. Transplanting is done carefully and quickly to have minimum trauma to the roots within 30 minutes of removal from seedling bed or media. 4. Only a minimum of water is applied during the vegetative growth period. Only about 2 cm and soil is left in a moist condition in cycles of intermittent irrigation where the soil is allowed to dry till cracks appear before watering again. 5. Weeding is necessary at least once or twice, starting 10 to 12 days after transplanting and preferably 3 or 4 times with intervals of 10 days. 6. As much as possible, organic fertiliser Green manure or compost is used to keep the soil moist but well drained and aerated with good structure. However, this is an option and not strictly compulsory. My name is Paulus Lembo from the village of Baka, in the province of East Nusa Tenggara. We have been planting paddy using SRI method in 13 hectares. We have just harvested a crop weighing 7.11 tonnes per hectare. Usually, non-SRI only yields 3.4 tonnes per hectare. Compared to conventional methods, SRI provides huge advantages to farmers. They include the following. 1. Saving water, because only a minimum of water is applied, only about 2 cm and the soil is left in a moist condition. And the soil is allowed to dry till cracks appear, before watering again, that is, in cycles of intermittent irrigation. Two, saving on cost, usually only 5 kilograms of seed per hectare instead of the 50 to 100 kilograms per hectare. Saving on cost of transporting seedlings and saving on cost of labour for planting. Three, saving time, because seedlings are transplanted at a young age, five to 10 days after planting and harvesting sooner than usual. 4. Increase in yield. For instance, in several places, harvest yields reach up to 11 tonnes per hectare. Only after using SRI method recently do we feel satisfied. I've been planting paddy and only now I have just experienced seeing 70 to 80 tillers and reaching a height of 140 centimetres, reaching up to here. And the yield results are very satisfying, reaching 9 tonnes per hectare. Non-SRI only reaches a maximum of 6 to 7 tonnes. Please observe the following step-by-step -step guidance for SRI methodology presented by our team of DISIMP facilitators. Yeah. 